Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this full on Firebase in React course where I'm going to be going over all of the different important topics that you might want to learn from the beginning till the end if you're trying to learn Firebase. Now we're going to be going over a lot of stuff. So I divided this whole video into chapters. You can just go to whatever topic you are interested in learning or watch the whole thing through because I'm going to go through everything in uh, order that makes sense if you've never learned Firebase in React before. So some of the topics we're going to talk about in this video is uh, like authentication, how to create a authentication system in Firebase, also how to uh, create a very simple like CRUD application using Firestore. Um, so we're going to be dealing with databases. Also, we're going to be talking about how to upload images and files into um, the storage service that Firebase um, contains. We're also going to be talking about some really cool stuff like how to do queries. And to finalize it, we're going to be learning how to host an application for free using Firebase. So uh, it's going to be a complete video. I've made a lot of videos in Firebase in the past, but I've never made a complete one like this. So buckle up because uh, I'm really excited for this video. Uh, if you want to check out the code, most of the code will be in the description. I'm going to leave a link for it. Uh, just check it out. And yeah, that's that's basically it. Before we get into the video, if you could leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate it. It will help push my videos to more people and I'll be really grateful if you guys could do so. So with that in mind, let's get into the video. Brilliant is an amazing platform where students can learn a variety of topics in STEM by following carefully crafted interactive courses. If you're a person who is looking to learn or improve your skills in areas like math, science and computer science, Brilliant is the perfect place for you. In my videos, I explain a lot of high level concepts in programming. However, this kind of technologies wouldn't be possible if an, a deeper understanding of low level programming didn't exist before. So learning from a course such as their computer science fundamentals course is really valuable for anyone working in tech. Also, I know for a fact, a lot of you guys are learning and practicing skills to pass your coding interviews. So if you're interested in practicing those, you can actually go over and check their algorithms fundamentals course, which will teach you all of the fundamental skills you need to ace your coding interview. The best part is that even if you're already familiar with all of the topics I already mentioned, Brilliant has thousands of lessons already in their platform and new ones are being added every month. So it's almost like a place where you will never run out of valuable content. If you're interested in checking them out, you can just visit brilliant.org slash pedrotech or click in the link that is in the description below. The first 200 people who visit the link below will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium membership. Again, thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video. I've used Brilliant in the past. I've actually made videos with Brilliant in the past, so I can vouch for them. It's a really nice platform and I'm really thankful that they sponsored this video. So with that in mind, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, everyone. So we're gonna start this course by uh, just opening up a couple of stuff. So first of all, we have to um, create a project, right, in VS Code. Um, I already created my project. It is a simple React application that I just used to create React app to create. You can use whatever um, method you want to use to create your application. Uh, but all I have in my app is just an app component, just like this, with um, the text saying Firebase course. And as you can see over here, this is all it's rendering. That's it's running already. So it's just this. Uh, I didn't add anything else yet, but we're going to be adding as we go through the video. Um, also, I open over here, uh, the Firebase console, uh, you just go to this link over here, it's console.firebase.google.com. Uh, you do have to be logged in into a Google account. Um, this is my Google account that I'm going to be using. And maybe if you've never used Firebase in the past, uh, uh, the, this will be empty, but you should see this button over here saying add project. And that's actually what we want to do initially, right? This is the first thing we want to do. So we're going to start off by clicking on add project. Then over here, we're going to add a project name, I'm going to call this Firebase course, just because this is what I want. But uh, you can email whatever you want. If you're using this for a project that you already have, that you already have in mind, or if you're just using this course to learn, uh, you can just name it whatever you want. Then it's going to ask for if we want Google Analytics to be in your project. Um, I'm just going to leave it, it's recommended. Uh, I'm just going to leave it for this because uh, there's no drawbacks from removing it from having it as well. So I'm just going to leave it just like this and click on continue. Then it's going to choose which account we want to configure our uh, Google Analytics, just choose the default account for Firebase, and it should be fine. Then we're going to click on create project, and it will start creating our project. 
Now I'll be back in a second when this is done, but it shouldn't take long at all. Okay, so as you can see, it says that our new project is ready. I'm gonna click on continue. And um, we're gonna open up over here, our actual console. So the Firebase console has a lot of really interesting things. Um, it has, as you can see over here on our side, a sidebar, which includes a couple of stuff. So I'm gonna go over a little bit of it. The first one is build. This is where you can see all the different services that Firebase can offer for you. So Firebase can help you with authentication, can help you with uh, app check, uh, with Firestar, which is the database we're gonna be using. Uh, they also have another type of database called the real-time database, um, storage, hosting, uh, serverless functions, machine learning. They have so much stuff that you can um, implement into your project and all of them exist on this sidebar over here. Then we have release and monitor. All of this is more for um, if you already have deployed a project and you wanna check out the analytics, check out the performance, all of the kind of stuff, you can see it all over here. Analytics as well, they have a whole tab just for this um, and you can imagine all the stuff you can learn from this. And then engage um, is whenever you wanna do, uh, actually I haven't, touched much on this part of, of Firebase, but uh, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Uh, but Firebase in itself starts out by just clicking on this thing over here because in this, it's basically telling us to get started with our app, right? And we have a couple options. We can actually use Firebase for mobile development as well. That's why it gives an option for uh, Apple, iOS, or Android. Um, it also allows you to do it with Flutter. That's why we have this option over here. And if you're using games, so if you're creating games with Unity, you can also click on this option over here. But we're gonna be using the web version, so we're gonna click on this, and it's gonna ask us to register our app. I'm gonna call this app Firebase Course again, but you can just call it whatever you want. And we want to set up hosting, because at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up hosting um, inside of this project. So we're gonna choose this thing over here uh, for our deployment and um, I'm gonna click on register app. Then it's gonna just register our app. It shouldn't take long, as you can see. And now it's asking us to add our Firebase SDK. So we're gonna be using uh, React, right? This whole course is in React. And um, we're gonna be using NPM or Yarn to install the Firebase package. So if you're using normal JavaScript, not React, you can actually use this script um, to add into your project, but we're not using this. So we're using NPM, this version. So the first thing we have to do is actually install Firebase into our code. I'm gonna open up uh, our project over here. I'm gonna open a terminal uh, and then just say yarn add Firebase, just like this. If you're using NPM, just do the same thing, but with NPM install Firebase. So while that's installing, we're gonna see that they give us an actual um, piece of code, right? This whole thing over here. This is extremely important and really cool because it kind of sets up the whole pro the whole configuration and setup for you. This is what's gonna connect your code, your Firebase, uh, your actual project, so the code that you're writing with the console related to this Firebase project. So we do have to have this inside of our project. And the way we do this is uh, I like to create another file called um, Firebase config. I'm actually gonna, oh, this is a JavaScript file, so I'm gonna put .js, and I'm going to actually create a folder called config over here for our project. That's what I like to do. I'm gonna put this Firebase config file inside of there, and since we're, this is inside of the config folder, I'm actually just gonna call it Firebase, right? So we have this config folder with this file called Firebase. I'm just doing this for organization purposes because I think it looks better this way, but here is where we're going to put all of that code that we just copied. So we're just gonna paste it over here. And you don't have to actually change any of these pieces of information, right? Uh, this information is automatically put uh, as the information for your specific project, right? So make sure you don't use the same API key, uh, domain, uh, app ID as the one uh, that I'm using because this is not the, the one that you're gonna have. Trust me when I say, Every time I make a video like this and I forget to delete the project right after, there's a bunch of people using my my API keys and, and stuff, which honestly, um, it doesn't matter because I just delete it like really quickly, but um, you should be using your own one. Maybe your project is not working because you didn't use your own one. Uh, just make sure you grab the one that it is on your console. So let me just check real quick. Uh, you can see our actual Firebase package was installed. So if we go over here to um, the package.json, we can see Firebase is now uh, installed into our project and this is the version that we're using. So I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna delete a bunch of these comments just to make it look a little bit more clean. 
because um, they are just explaining stuff. But basically, let me go over a little bit of what this is. So initialize app is the function that is, is used every time you want to start a new application in Firebase, right? And you create a variable called app and you set it equal to this, you pass in the config for the specific project that you want to set up. And now this app variable over here contains a lot of information and it is the, the variable that will connect uh, your project with all the different Firebase services. Also, they provide us with analytics over here. I, I allowed analytics to be used in our project. However, um, I don't think it should, uh, like we're not gonna be talking about it in this video because it is not that important um, unless you actually have deployed like a full on application with a bunch of users using it, right? So I'm gonna delete that right now. Now, this is what we have. I'm gonna go back over here, then click on next and it's gonna tell us to install uh, the Firebase CLI. This is for whenever we have, we wanna start hosting our project, right? So we do need to install this since we're gonna be using Firebase um, CLI, the Firebase CLI to, ho to, to actually deploy our project and have our project being hosted. Uh, but the thing is, since we're installing a Firebase uh, CLI tool, uh, this is not part of our project. Uh, it's part of like what we have globally inside of our computer. So I'm actually gonna run yarn global add Firebase tools. The global will just make it exist everywhere inside of our computer. And if you're using NPM, just copy this command, they already made it for you. So that should be fine. I'm gonna press enter and it will start installing Firebase tools for us. So then I'm gonna click on next and it's gonna say deploy to Firebase hosting. Uh, I'm actually not gonna do this now because uh, we haven't created our project yet. So I don't know why they even put that as um, a first part in your project. I kind of get if you wanna see your project being, being made and deployed as it goes, you can do that, but that's not what we're gonna be doing because the first thing we're gonna be working on is authentication in our project. So I'm gonna click on build over here and go to authentication and let's take a look at some stuff that you can do with authentication in Firebase. So it's gonna ask you to get started and you can just click on that and it's going to ask you what kind of sign-in method you want to implement inside of your project. So the two main ones that I like to use in projects is um, either email and password because that's the most common and standard one. But also I really love using Google because everyone has a Google account in my opinion, like or uh, most people do. And it's super quick and easy to just, you're already logged into your account. You just click on the account you're logged in and now you, you're logged in into your project. It simplifies a lot because people don't like creating passwords and putting their emails on websites. So just having a really quick authentication system like that without having to worry of, about storing passwords inside of your project is also really cool. But since this is a full on tutorial course, I'm gonna show you guys both. First, the email and password um, capability that you can you can do. You can also do it passwordless by having an email link, but I'm not gonna show that. Um, and then I'm gonna show the Google um, version. So I'm gonna click on enable for email and password and click on save. And you can see uh, now we have that available inside of our project. So how do we actually do it with email and password? So the way we're gonna do this is we're actually going to come over here to our Visual Studio Code and we're gonna import something at the top from um, the Firebase library, but we're gonna specify what kind of service we want to import from. We're gonna import from the authentication service, so the auth service over here. And what we want to import is uh, a function called get auth. And this function is really important because it's what sets up authentication inside of your project. So what you do is you create a variable, you can call it auth, set it equal to get auth, and you just pass in the app. So every service you're gonna implement, you're gonna use in your project, this is kind of how it looks. You create a variable, you set it to get the name of the first service. So if you're using database Firestore, we can, it's probably gonna be get Firestore. And then you pass in the app that you initialized over here. So we're gonna use this variable everywhere inside of our project. So we actually want to export this so that whenever we wanna use it, we can just import it from this file. Then what we wanna do is we wanna go to our app over here and this is where we actually start creating our application, which right now just looks like this. So it's not it's not really good. So I'm gonna start by creating an actual extra component uh, for authentication. I wanna keep this organized. So I'm gonna create a folder called components and I'm gonna create a, a component called um, auth.js. And over here, we're just gonna create this component by saying export auth uh, const auth uh, and set it equal to this. And this is the component that we have, right? It's gonna have a div and probably an input 
which is going to contain uh, the username and an input that is going to contain the password, right? So I'm going to put a placeholder so that we know which one is which. So I'm going to put it's not e username, it's email. Uh, and then we're going to put an email, uh, a placeholder for um, the password as well. So password just like this. And we obviously want to see this on our app. So we're going to import this over here. We're just going to say auth, just like this, press enter, and it's going to automatically import the component. And you can see that now both things are being displayed in our screen, I accidentally put an extra um, <laughs> thing over there. And I'm also gonna put a button over here. Uh, and this button is gonna actually I'm gonna put it inside of the auth, this button is going to be used for um, signing in to our project. So sign in just like this. So we have kind of the UI set up for authentication. Now what I want to do is I want to uh, go over here at the top and I want to import the get or the auth variable that we created uh, in our Firebase config file. So we're going to go back twice so that now we can go into the config folder and then go into the Firebase file and we're just going to import the auth variable. Then what we have to import is another thing from uh, Firebase slash auth. And this thing is actually a method. So depending on which uh, method of authentication you chose, so if you chose Google, if you chose sign in with your Microsoft account, uh, sign in with passwords, with phone numbers, whatever you chose, there's different functions and methods that you can use to um, implement that. So the one we're going to use is create a user with uh, with email and password, right? Because that's, I love the name because it's really intuitive. So this is the function that we're going to be using. Now, how do we use the function? Well, first of all, we have to create a function that will be called whenever you click on the button. So we're going to call this sign in, just like this. And this function is going to be called whenever you click on the sign in button. Then over here, we have to uh, first of all, have access to what the user is typing on both inputs over here. So how exactly would we do that? Well, we can do that in many ways. One very easy and quick way is creating a state uh, in react, which is going to hold the value of this input. So the first thing over here is an email and set email. And then we're gonna have one for password. So password and set password. And then uh, for email, we're going to say on change, and we're going to pass in, we're going to grab the event, and then just say set email to event dot target dot value. Uh, if you're watching this tutorial, by the way, I assume you know the basics of react, like the, the, the basics basics, because I don't see the point of learning Firebase immediately when you learn react, because that's just too much. Uh, so this kind of stuff over here, like setting a state to be equal to the value of an input is something that I kind of, uh, I hope you guys already have at least a little bit of understanding on what I'm doing, right? So we're going to do the exact same thing for the password. But the only difference is we're going to change this to the set password uh, function, right? So now we have both inputs and we have access to their values by uh, using the states. So in the sign in function over here, we can just press enter. And then we are going to make this an asynchronous function. The reason for that is because when you are working with Firebase, you a lot of the stuff uh, return promises. So you do need to use async await or uh, dot then dot catch whatever notation you prefer. But async await is the latest version, <laughs> the latest uh, notation, and it's the best one, in my opinion. So that's what we're going to be using. So most functions will be asynchronous. And whenever we want to get something, uh, or create, for example, do something related to Firebase, we can just say, await, and then call the function that we're going to be using. So I'm going to call the create user with email and password function. Now, what does this function do, right? Well, first of all, uh, you have to pass in a couple things. So the first thing you need to pass in is your auth, because it kind of relates your project with this method, then you have to pass in the two things. First of all, you need to pass in the email. And the second one is the password. So you just put in both of them just like this, and it will indeed create that thing. So let's test to see if this actually works, we're gonna uh, just come over here into our project. And you can actually check to see which users have created accounts into your project by going to users 
over here. It exists inside of the authentication part. And there's no user so far. But if we come to our react app, and I put a user, I'm going to create a fake email over here called fake email at gmail.com. I'm going to put a password, let's call it fake. Actually, let me make this field a password field, because then, um, then it kind of resembles more of what a website would be, but I'm going to put password. And what I'm going to write here is fake password. I'm going to click on sign in. And you'll see that now, if I refresh the page, or refresh this thing, now we have this user called fake email at gmail.com. It shows when they were created, um, their signed in uh, date, and also their UID. So they got a, a specific ID, it also shows the provider because you can actually have multiple types of signing in uh, methods inside of your project, which is really cool. So you can do all of this kind of stuff, you can actually like reset a person's password, you can delete their account, you can disable their account, there's so many things you can do. But you can see our authentication system kind of worked. Also, this will continue being signed in, right? So this is handling already the user signed in or not. So how exactly do we know that? Well, this auth variable over here, it doesn't only serve for putting it inside of functions like this one, it actually also serves for uh, getting the user that is currently signed in. And a good way to do this is for example, uh, just as an example over here, uh, I'm going to just console log uh, the auth dot uh, current user, right, dot uh, email, just to say so when you say current auth dot current user, you can get the information of the current user logged in. And then when you say email, you're obviously going to get the current email. And let's see if this works, right? I'm going to inspect element, obviously, since we just logged in, it should work, it's saying the correct email. But let me close this tab come over here and log in again, you'll see that uh, it will give us an error, right? Because for a second, it hasn't logged in yet, it hasn't checked if the user is logged in or not. However, the way we fix that is by using this uh, <laughs> question marks over here, so that we're not trying to access objects that doesn't exist. And you can see that when we do that, it actually works, it says undefined, but it's because for a split second, it hasn't checked to see which user was signed in or not. But if we were to do something like uh, change a state or re render the component, you'll see that every time the component re renders, uh, it does actually show which user is signed in. So it is handling all of that for you, which is really cool. So uh, we're going to delete this because we actually don't need this. But um, one thing I want to do is whenever you're dealing with uh, anything that is async await, you should always be handling your errors. So I will be try catching this uh, like this just by saying error over here. And then if we get any error, we can just know which error we got by console logging or consoling error. If you've never tried to put the error method, it just uh, displays the error message uh, in a more um, normal way. But then I'm going to put error over here. And in case something happens, we will know because it will be console logged. So we'll refresh this and we kind of have our sign in functionality kind of set up. Now, what exactly do we want to do? Well, I want to show you guys another sign in method that you can create inside of your project. So uh, there's a couple ones that would be kind of cool. Um, I'm probably going to use Google, because I always do use Google as an example, and I think it's the most applicable one. Uh, so we're just going to click on Google and click on enable, then it's going to ask for a project support email, just the email that you want to use to support this Google account. Um, so I'm just going to choose a random email and click on save. And then it's going to finish setting up our Google integration. So now that we have that over here, you'll see that since we already set up a lot of the initial um, ground up setup for this project, uh, it's not going to be that hard to implement something like uh, entering and logging in and authenticating with Google. The first thing we have to do is we just have to import something from Firebase auth called Google auth provider. So if you're using an, an external service like Google, you have to have a provider. And the way it works is you actually just come over here, you say const uh, provider, or Google provider, provider, just like this is equal to new Google auth provider, just like this. And we do have to have access to it elsewhere. So we're going to put export just like this. And now in our auth over here, let's actually add the ability to sign in with Google. So uh, I'm actually hmm, I'm gonna, it's not gonna look the most organized <laughs> UI ever, because that's not the point of the video. Uh, 
So if you want to make this look a little bit cooler, just do it. But I'm going to put actually over here a button, which is going to be sign in with Google. It's going to be right next to all of the other ones. But we're going to put an on click over here. And we're going to create a function called sign in with Google. Then we're going to create a function very similar to this one over here. It's basically going to be called sign in with Google. But the difference is instead of using the create user with email and password, we can actually there's a couple of different methods you can use to sign in with Google, right? There's one which is uh, having a pop up show up, which in my opinion is the best one. Uh, there's other ones like, I don't know, opening a new tab and signing in from there or just redirecting your current page to Google. But I like the pop up version because it doesn't take the user away from the website. So that's the one I'm going to be using. Uh, it's called sign in with uh, pop up. But you can see there's the redirect one that, is, that exists as well. But we're going to be using the pop up one. And this is what we're going to put over here, we need to pass in the auth. And then the other thing we need to pass in is the uh, provider. So we're going to call it Google provider. And we're just going to pass it over here and delete the email thing over here. So how does this work? Well, it's very simple. When you come over here, um, I'm going to actually log out of this um, of this thing. Uh, and but actually, I'm just gonna show real quick how to actually log out, which is something that is really cool. Uh, to log out is actually really simple as well. Uh, I'm just gonna create another button called log out. And I'm gonna create another function called log out or sign out or whatever you want. And this is pretty simple. So, uh, so I, I don't I don't think it it's a problem for me to just show it really quick before we show that signing in with Google uh, works, we're just going to put log out over here. And then we just have to import from uh, Firebase auth, there's this method called sign out. And it's pretty simple. You just come over here to the logout thing, you put sign out. And then you just pass in the auth, you don't even have to pass anything out. And then perfect, that's done, you're signed out. So over here, uh, if we still had the the whole console log of the current user, I'm going to show you guys console log auth dot current user dot email. So if we have this right, and we put the question marks in case uh, for a second, there's no uh, <laughs> current user logged in, right, you'll see that if we inspect element, and go to a console, it says undefined, but when we click on the emails, it's still logged in as the fake email user, right. But then if I click on log out, there's no like visual representation, obviously, you can add that and you should add that to your project, you should, you should like redirect the user to a different page or something like that. But on the background, it did actually log the user out because when I try to type this, it should not say undefined. Because whenever a user is um, because now we actually delete or not logged in. So it's re rendering the page taking in the new information, which is that the user is not logged in. But if we click on sign in with Google, you'll see that it opened this thing up. It asks us which email we want to log in with, I'm going to choose this one over here. And it's then going to log us in, you haven't gotten any visual presentation, but obviously, in your project, you can do that. Uh, but if I try to refresh the page, and try to re render the component, you'll see I'm now logged in with this email, which is a different email. Not only that, but it does appear that we have a new user inside of our list of users, and it shows that it is a Google uh, signed in user, uh, depending on what kind of uh, user you logged in, or what kind of provider you the user used to log in, you can get different pieces of information. For example, if I wanted to, I could grab the photo. Is it photo URL? Yeah, I think it's photo URL for a user. And what exactly is a photo URL for a user? Well, if you're logged in with Google, you do have a Google profile page, right? So if you click on this, this is my profile image for the user logged in as with a Google account. Uh, but that doesn't exist with uh, the user who signed in with just email and password. So that's important factors that you need to take into account, uh, whenever you create a user, or which provider they use. So this is basically it for authentication. There's a lot more you can do. And whenever you're integrated this into your project, you'll see that uh, there's other stuff that you'll be figuring out as you go. But I wanted to lay out the basics, which is signing in with different providers and logging out from an account and showing you guys how authentication actually works. So now that we have we're done with this, we're actually going to start working with another service in Firebase. And what we're going to be working with is the um, Firestore database um, service. So 
If you've never worked with Firebase before, you might have not known that you can actually create a whole full stack application using Firebase. That's what we technically did with the authentication, right? We haven't created any backend, we're just using React. And this is one of the most powerful uh, aspects of Firebase. And Firestore is one of the two different databases that you can use inside of Firebase. It is recommended nowadays that you use Firestore for almost all kinds of situation. Uh, that's why I don't have any tutorials using real time database, I do use Firestore for anything even for real time data, right, I, I've made a video recently where I show you guys how to build a chat app application like a real time chat app application, where we use Firestore, we don't even use real time database. So I would recommend learning Firestore instead of real time database. Now to create a Firestore and integrate it into your project, you just click on create database. Then this is what's going to appear. I'm going to go a little bit over uh, what these rules are in a bit. So I'm going to actually choose production mode. I think production mode is important. Uh, but uh, you can also start in test mode. There's no different. Uh, there's no difference in, in the actual code you write. The only difference is that uh, there are certain rules that you can implement of who can write and and like edit and make changes to your database. And they can be set up on production mode. But on test mode, you don't have to do that, it already does it for you. But since I'm going to teach you guys all of the rules in this video, I'm going to click on production mode, then we're going to click on next, it's going to ask for the location of our database. This is extremely important, because you do want to put it in a place where it makes sense for the user base of your project, because you can actually you can't change it later, right. So uh, this is what you should choose. In my opinion, I am right over here. So I'm going to choose the United States one, but you can choose whatever makes sense for you. Then we're gonna click on enable and it's going to start setting up Firestore for us. Now you can see that um, there's a bunch of stuff already directly inside of our face, right? The first thing is that there's this thing over here, which is the panel view. So here it includes this thing called a co start a collection, right this button. Now a collection would be like a table, if you're using a, I don't know, a SQL database, uh, or just a collection if you're using like MongoDB or something like that, right? It's where um, if you have different pieces of data inside of your project, uh, this is where you would include them. So it's like an entity in a database, right? So uh, if we have a project where we have a bunch of users, and we want to store them, and we're not using the Firebase authentication system, for example, we could create a collection called users, if we're storing comments, from I don't know, if you have YouTube, and you're starting, you're storing the comments that people write, you can create a, a collection called comments. Uh, so it's a place where you can store data. So in this case, over here, we're going to be creating a collection called movies. Now, why exactly did I choose movies? Well, because I just want to choose uh, anything. As an example for this part of the tutorial, you can make a project that will allow you to I don't know, you can do a to do list, you can do whatever you want. I'm just gonna create a little project where we're going to be able to create movies, read a list of movies that people created, and be able to delete and edit them from that list. So you put the name over here of what makes sense for yours. Uh, in our case, we're going to be working with movies as an example. So I'm going to put movies, then it's going to ask for uh, a document. So what is a document? A document is just an entry inside of your collection. So in my SQL, for example, or, or any SQL database, an uh, document would just be a row in a table. So it's just an example of what uh, kind of data will exist inside of your project, I'm going to auto generate an ID because it asks for an ID, and it asks for some fields that we can indeed um, add, right. So for example, a movie, let's think about it, what would a movie have inside of it. So it would probably have the title of the movie, right. And then we can create an example over here just as the first one that we put into our database, I'm going to put interstellar as an example, uh, then it's going to ask for what else what else do we want? We want date, uh, release date. So I'm going to put release date. And then it's a number not a string. And I have no idea. So I'm making this no this numbers up, I'm gonna say it's like 2002, 2001, I don't know, 2003. Uh, then what else? Let's put let's not overcomplicate this. Let's, uh, we could put the the director, but I, I already have a string. So let's actually make this a little bit cool. Let's say, uh, it's a Boolean, which says if the movie got an Oscar or something like that. Uh, <laughs> most of the information I'm gonna put here is probably inaccurate. Uh, but um, let's just use it as an example. So received an Oscar. 
Uh, and it's gonna be a Boolean. Let's pre. I, I did Interstellar win an Oscar? I don't remember. I'm gonna put uh, as true, but then I'm gonna click save. And this is how our uh, Firestore collection will look like. So we're gonna have a collection called movies. Then we're gonna have a bunch of documents inside of it, right? Which are entries. And an example of a, a document we can have is this one over here, where it's gonna have a title, a uh, release date, and a value for if they received an Oscar or not. It's also going to have an ID, but the ID exists as the name of the document over here. So what I want to do now is I want to add the functionality for us to display um, the stuff that is inside of our Firestore database inside of our project. So I basically want to read the data over here um, and display it over here in inside of our code. So what how we do this is we have to come to our Firebase part over here. Right. And we have to tell Firebase that um, it's it's going to have access to um, the Firestore service. So when we say import, now we're going to import from Firebase slash Firestore. So similar to the authentication service, we now need to import from the Firestore service. And similar to get auth, the way we tell Firebase that we're going to be using Firestore is we use a function called get um, Firestore, just like this. Then we copy this. We come down here at the bottom, we again export a constant because we're going to be having access to this constant elsewhere, then the constant, let's call it DB for a database and set it equal to get Firestore. And finally, we just pass in the app because um, we have to do this, like I said, um, in the beginning of the video. So now we have DB as a variable. Now, what do we do with this? Well, with this, we can basically do whatever we want. Because if I come over here to our app, right, I'm going to um, I think I'm gonna just do a bunch of the functionality inside of this app component, um, just to keep it simple. So over here, if I want to display the list of movies that exist in this the database, what we do is we come over here at the top, we're going to import some stuff. So we're going to import um, from and then we dot uh, back to config, then to Firebase, and we want to import the DB uh, constant that we just created. Then what I want to do is I want to have a state that is going to keep track of um, the list of movies. So we're going to create over here a state, we're going to say use state, it's going to import use state at the top, and then we're going to import and it's going to be a list. And then over here, we call it something like movie list, something like this, and then set movie list, just like this. Um, then we save this. And we come over here and I want to create a function that is going to uh, be used to get the list of movies. So guest get movie list. And this is the function we're going to be using to query or receive or read our database. Then with this function, it actually we want it to run immediately when you get into the website, right? Because um, when you get into the website, you I want to just display everything. I don't want to have to click on a button to just display the movies. I want everything to be happening instantly. So in order to do something like that, we can just use a use effect. Uh, because the use effect will run um, when the component is rendered. And we can just put it right over here, just like this. And then um, we have to make this function get movie list. And also, I'm going to put this an empty dependency array, so it doesn't run every time there's a change in state. Uh, I also need to make this function async, because like I said, most of our Firebase operations will be asynchronous. Now inside of here, we have to um, read the data from our database and then set the movie list uh, state to be equal to that data. So how exactly do we get that data? Well, the way we do it is um, there is this function from uh, Firebase that we can just import by coming import from uh, Firebase slash Firestore. And this function is called get docs. So what is get docs? Well, like I said, um, we have a doc, uh, we have a, a collection called movies, and we have a bunch of documents, right? Right now, we only have one, but we can have a bunch of documents, which is going to represent each of the movies in our collection. So if we want to get a bunch of docs, we can use this function called get docs. If we want to only get one document, so one movie, there's also a function called get doc. But in our case, we want all of them. So we're going to use the get docs function. And the way we do this is we come over here, we create a variable called data, we set it equal to await, uh, because it will return a promise. 
and we just put the get docs function. Now we have to specify which collection we want to get all of the documents from. Uh, and the way we specify this is by actually using a function from Firestar called collection. And over here, we can just make a reference to our movie collection, so movies collection, uh, and call it ref because it's a reference, and set it equal to the collection function. Now, how do we specify which collection we want to set this variable equal to? Well, we first pass in our DB variable over here by just putting it inside of this. And then we specify using a key. And this key has to be equal to this name over here. So the name of your collection. So in our case, it's movies. So we're just going to put movies over here. And now we have a reference to our collection. So we just put it inside of the get docs. And now the get docs will get all the documents inside of this collection. So since we have the data, we might want to error handle. So I'm going to put a try catch over here. Um, just like we did with the authentication. And in case there's any error, we're just going to console dot error, the error, just like this. Then uh, we just read the data. So we need to set the movie list to be equal to that data, right? Because as of right now, you can actually test this out. Let's just test this out to see, I'm going to console log the data. So you guys can have an idea of what we're doing. And also, uh, one of the reasons why we use the function instead of this use effect, instead of um, just writing this code directly inside of the use effect is because you can't make a use effect be async, right? And we had to, to use an async function to make this work. So we had to create this function. And right below the definition of the function, all we do is we just call the function just like this, it's kind of a workaround for you to make have asynchronous um, notation inside of your use effect, right? So now that we called it, let's test this out, right? If I refresh the page, it should already be console logged. We're going to go to our console. And we're going to see that it says actually, uh, that we have missing or insufficient permissions. And this is something that uh, is extremely important for you to know, because the reason why it's given us this error is because we haven't set the rules for our uh, Firestar database. So if you remember in the beginning, I mentioned that we chose the production mode instead of the test mode, because in this video, I wanted to show you guys a little bit about rules in Firestore. So this rules thing over here is basically, um, it's a little bit of code, right, as you can see, that we can add it. And it basically determines who can create changes in inside of your database. And it's really cool, because it helps you determine, uh, and really build the protection over your database. So in our case, as of right now, it basically says that it's going to allow people to read and write on this database, if false, this is by default, which means that basically no one, no one can read or write into the database, because false is is never true. And it's only allowing this database to be read and written, if false, <laughs> so it will always be false. So if I want anyone to be able to write and read inside of our database, I can actually make this true, click on publish. And you'll see that now if I refresh this page, we will get something right because now anyone can read and write. Uh, later on in the video, I'm going to exp I'm going to make it so that only authenticated users are actually being able to read and write which is going to be a little bit cooler. Uh, and you guys will see but for now, let's just set it to true, so that we can just work around with it. So you can see we are also logging something. And we can kind of analyze how this looks. So if we click over here, we'll see a bunch of stuff. Uh, most importantly, we can see a uh, Firestore over here, you can click on Firestore, we can analyze all of this information that we get back from our query. However, there's one thing that is important to know, it's it's kind of confusing, <laughs> you can clearly see it is confusing. Uh, you might not understand any of this, because we're not the ones writing the backend and the response. So um, I'm going to try to simplify it as possible for you guys. If you guys want to grab uh, this list of data that we get back, and you want to just um, get the specific documents and their data individually, one way you can do this is by basically uh, creating this object, we're going to create an object over here. Uh, I'm actually going to create it as a constant. So constant, um, filtered data. And when I when I say filtered, I mean, like, we're going to grab directly the data that we want from this response. So we're going to ignore all the rest that is returned to us, we're just going to get exactly what we want. And it's going to be and basically the way we do this is we create an array. Uh, and this array is going to be actually, we're just going to say docs, our data from here, then we're going to access the docs. So all the documents from this data, then we're going to map through all of them. Because for each document, 
right? We want to actually create an object that is only going to contain some pieces of information. The information that we want is we want to have um, their ID, their received Oscar value, their release date value, and their title value. So how do we make it so that only those things exist in the object is we're going to return an object that contains the doc dot data. So there's this function data in each document, which you can just use to get this information over here. But the thing is that doc dot data doesn't actually return the ID. So if we want to get the ID as well, we can do this by uh, separately creating this ID property in each object and setting it equal to the doc dot ID. So this is how you would actually filter that data. I know it seems a little bit confusing. However, don't worry, as you work with it, you'll get used to it uh, and understanding exactly what you have to do to manipulate um, to get the data you want. But you'll see that now if I console log the filter data, it won't look ugly like it was before. It will look like exactly how we want. It will look like an array with one object so far. And the properties inside of it is ID, received an Oscar, release date and title, which is matching exactly what we have in our database. And if we want to, to display this in our screen, all we have to do is just set our movie list to be equal to the filter data. And then come down here at the bottom, below our auth, I'm going to make a div with uh, the data. And then I'm just going to loop through the movie list. And for each movie, we're literally just going to return a div um, like this, a div, which is going to include uh, probably an h1 tag for the title. So I'm going to say movie dot title, uh, probably a, a p tag for was it the release date? Yeah, I'm going to put like date. Uh, and then movie dot release date just like this. And then for the actual, um, see, it's already working, right? It's already displaying. But actually, what I wanted to do for the um, received an Oscar, because it's a true or false statement, a cool thing that I want to that maybe I, I can do is uh, maybe like change the it's stupid, but I'll just change the titles color. Uh, <laughs> I'll put some CSS here, something cool, I'll just change the color of this title to um, green if it received an Oscar and red if it didn't. Uh, I know it looks dumb, but it's just something cool that we can do. I can just say something like movie dot uh, received an Oscar. Uh, if it's true, then we set this to green. If it's false, we set this to to red. You'll see that the first one is green because it is it received an Oscar. But if we were to create another one that wasn't uh, didn't receive an Oscar, this would actually be red. So we have a list of users right, or movies, right, which are being displayed in our screen, which is really cool, because this is the first part of a CRUD application. So the next part is actually being able to create new movies inside of our app. And the way we're going to do this is it's all going to be a little bit mashed up inside of one page, because uh, I'm just showing each feature you can work on um, individually. Um, so I don't worry that much about that. But what we're going to do is above um, being able to see the list of movies, we're going to create another div, which is going to contain uh, the UI for creating a new movie. So what UI do we want? Well, we want an input, which uh, is going to be for the movie name, so movie title, then we probably want um, one for the release date. So release date. And since like, oh, it's probably just the, the year, right? So I'm going to put over here, it has to be of type number. Right. And then uh, we have this two things over here. So I can put like 2003 2004. And we can write the title here. But we also need to determine if it's true or false for received an Oscar. So I think I'm going to put a checkbox. So we do that by just saying input uh, type checkbox. And then we have this checkbox over here, and we can put a label, which I think is is important, because um, when we put a label, we have to de define what the checkbox uh, means. So we're going to put uh, received an Oscar. We'll see that this is how it looks. So we have this two inputs and this um, checkbox over here. So now we also need a button to submit this movie. So I'm going to put a button down here. 
and it's going to say submit movie. Now we have the UI done, but what do we do now? Well, we need to get the data that you're typing in on all three of these things. So on the input for the movie title, the one for the release date, and also for the checkbox. So the way we do that is we're going to create some states, right? I'm going to separate this like this. Uh, I'm going to write a comment and say new movie states, just for you guys to kind of have it organized and understand which part is which. But over here, we're going to create a state for the new movie title and set new movie title. And it's going to be a use state that's going to be a string. And we're going to do the same thing for uh, both um, the new movie, new release date, I'll say new release date, and set new release date. Just like this. And finally, the last one is a uh, new movie. I shall say is new movie. Oscar, <laughs> I hate this name, but uh, this is what we're, we're going to probably have to to live with. But just as an example, so it's fine. Also, it's important to notice that since this one, this one is a string, but this is a number because the date is a number. And this is a Boolean. So we'll set it up as false initially. So what do we do now? Well, for the for this one over here, we just put an on change, right? An on change, like we did before, grab the event and set the new movie title to be equal to the event dot target dot value. Now, what we do with this one is we do the exact same thing. But the difference is that we need to set the uh, new release date. And also this has to be converted to a number, I believe, I think this comes out as a string. Uh, but we need to set this to a number because this is a number and not a string. So for the checkbox, what we do is there's two properties that are important to acknowledge here. So there's the checked property, which uh, basically determines if the thing is checked or not. Uh, and there is the on change property that obviously will run whenever there's a change. So on the on change, what we can do is we can basically do this sim similar to what we've been doing so far, and say set is new movie Oscar equal to but instead of saying e dot target dot value, we're gonna say e dot target dot checked. So checkboxes have this property called checked, which uh, we can access. And if I remove this checked property right now, you'll see that uh, I can click on this. Uh, and it will change and it will actually change the value of our state. But it's also cool if uh, even if we were able to change this uh, in a different way, uh, change the state, the value would match whatever the state has. So I can just put a checked over here and say that it will be checked whenever is new movie Oscar is checked as well. And you'll see that there's no like visible changes here. The only difference is that if, for example, I set this to be equal to true initially, and I refresh the page, it will be checked uh, because it is taking into account the value of the state to determine if the actual thing is checked or not. Where else, if I didn't have that and the initial value is true, you'll see that it wouldn't actually match. So it isn't something that important. It's just something that I wanted to point out. Uh, in case you didn't know that you could do this. So now we have actual access to the data that we want. So what do we do? Well, what we do is we create this function that is going to be clicked on uh, when you click on the submit movie uh, thing, we're going to call it on submit movie. And we're going to create it uh, probably down here, right below the use effect, we're going to call it on submit movie. It is an async function, because like I said, all of the functions dealing with um, Firebase have to be async, then what we do is we actually import some stuff at the top from Firestore, similar to how we have the get docs function, we can import the add doc function, which obviously by the name, it adds a document, right. And um, what we do is we come down here into this function, we say await add doc. And what we put here is very simple, we just have to put two things. First of all, is a reference to our movie collection, which we already have because we had to make one uh, for getting the data. So we just put it over here. And then what we put is just the data that we want to add, and it has to be in the format of um, the data that we're creating. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to put over here, uh, a title, right, for the movie title, and it's going to be equal to new movie title, then we have to put a release date so release date, 
and it's going to be equal to new movie release date, I think. Yeah, new movie release date, isn't it? Or new, new release date, actually, uh, we're going to put it over here. And then finally, we just have to put uh, how does it look like? Let me check. Uh, received an Oscar, right? So just say received an Oscar equal to is new movie Oscar. Um, so we're just setting the values equal to this, we don't have to put an ID, because the idea will be automatically generated when you add the document. And when we're finished with that, we um, actually just come over here. Let's put a try catch again. So we can handle if there's any errors, and catch any errors, and then just console dot error, any error. And now if we save this, this should be working, but we're not going to actually get any visual like confirmation that it worked. Other than if we try to add a movie, I'm going to try to add, for example, what's a, a movie that people like, I don't know, I'm gonna put Harry Potter. Uh, I'll put Harry Potter one. <laughs> and then I think it was 2001 or 1999, probably 2001. Uh, did it receive an Oscar? I'm, I don't think it did the first one, I'm gonna click on submit movie. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing, I'm gonna click on submit movie. And if it worked, you can see it did, uh, we should see a new entry of a new document in our collection, which contains the information that we just submitted. Now, you see, it's not being displayed automatically over here, which isn't cool, because uh, this means that um, we're not automatically rendering everything. And we can optimistically render this by just uh, manually changing our array of movie lists whenever we add a new document, but I don't want to do that. There's a couple ways to do this, you can actually subscribe to what is known as a snapshot in Firebase, but I want to keep this simple. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make this get movie list uh, function outside of the use effect. And what happens is every time there's a necessary uh, call of this function to get the lists again, I'm just going to uh, use it. So if there's a success in adding a new document, we'll just call the get movie list again, and it will get the updated versions. Now you might think, okay, but aren't we querying like twice, like every time we add a new document, we need to query again. I don't think that that would be a problem. Um, this is a very secure way to do this. Uh, we could obviously manually change the value of our state, which is known as optimistic rendering, like I said. Uh, but I feel like this way is the best way to do you are get, getting double reads. However, that's not that much of an issue, especially when you're using something like Firebase. So I'm going to try to add another movie, I'm going to try to put Harry Potter Two. Um, Harry Potter Two. Uh, I think that one was a year later. And I know we didn't receive an Oscar, but let's just put that it received, click on submit movie. And if I click on it, I hope it appears in our screen, which it does. Now, uh, we just need two more parts of our crud to actually finish up this part of the tutorial. So what do we need? Well, we need to be able to delete an entry and to update an entry. So how exactly are we going to do that? Well, first of all, let's go with delete because that's actually pretty simple. The way we do this is um, we come over here, you're going to obviously create a function called um, delete movie. So const delete movie. And it's going to be async, and it's gonna be a simple function, uh, we're going to import over here at the top another function, which is going to be called delete doc. Uh, and you guys can already start getting the patterns, right? Uh, it gets really um, fast paced after you get used to it, because a lot of this functionality, a lot of the notation in Firebase is, is pretty similar. So it gets really easy. So then what I do is, um, first of all, actually, I have to grab the, the, the movie, or the specific document I want to delete, because uh, the function delete doc uh, actually takes in um, a document. And how do we get a document? Well, we get by actually using a, a function called doc in Firestore. And we use it like this, we grab, we create a movie doc, set it equal to doc. And then what we do is we specify first of all, okay, we want to grab a, a document from this database. And we put the name to which collection we want to grab the document from. So it's from the movies collection. And then all we put over here is the ID of the collection or of the document we want to delete. So of the movie we want to delete. But how do we have access to this ID? Well, the way I'm going to do this is um, I'm going to call this function inside of this map over here, right? 
So we're, we're looping through our movie list. So inside of here, I'm going to probably put like a, a button over here called delete movie so that every movie now has a delete movie button. And inside of this map, we have access to the movie, which means we do have access to the ID. So what I do is I'm going to put an on click to this thing, call the the delete movie uh, function and pass in the ID of the specific movie as an argument to this function. And then on the delete movie function, I'm going to grab the ID as an argument and then just pass it over here, just like this. And you'll see that if I put the movie doc inside of the delete doc now, what's going to happen is for each movie, we're going to have this button, which is going to grab the specific ID, pass in as argument and delete the movie. Now, one thing you might be questioning, I don't know if you're fam how familiar you are with react, but since we're passing in an argument to this function, we, we can't just put delete movie without this, like this, we do have to create a new function that does this, it's just a, a weird notation in react. So let's try this out. We're going to refresh our page, right? These are the movies we have. Let me delete Harry Potter 2. I'm going to click on this button. And as you can see, it deleted indeed, right? It's not even over here. We only have Harry Potter 1 and Interstellar. So it is working, which is pretty good. So now what we want to do is we want to finalize this part of the tutorial, which is the cred part of the tutorial, by adding the ability to update a user. And I like to put this at the end because um, it's a little bit more complicated. Not that much, though. Uh, I think even getting the user was a little bit more complicated than this. Uh, because at this point, you might already start getting the, the patterns for everything. But what we want to do is I want to actually add over here the, the functionality, right, the, the, the inputs, so that you change maybe the hmm, what should we do? Should we add, make it so that? Uh, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow you to change the title for some reason. Uh, I know usually you don't, you're not able to change titles of movies, but it's just an example. I just want to show you guys that you can change a part of your data. So I'm going to put an input for every movie being displayed in our uh, thing. And you'll see that now every movie has this input. Uh, and this input will have a placeholder called new title. And we also want to put a button to update um, the, the actual movie. So update title just like this. And this is how it's going to look. So if you want to change this title from Harry Potter one to Harry Potter two, for some reason, imagine you made a mistake, you can just put a new title, click on this button, and this will change here and in the database. So how are we going to do this? Well, to do this, we're going to do something very similar to what we did with our delete, we're going to create another function over here. And this function will take in will be called update movie title. And it's going to take in two things. The first one is the ID, because we do have to specify which document we want to update. So it's going to require an ID, but also the new movie title, right? So do we put this inside of as an argument? No, because actually, we're going to have to keep track of that through another state uh, that we're going to create over here at the top. So I'm going to create a state and put over here, update title state, then say const, uh, uh, I'm going to call it updated title, set updated title, like this, set it equal to use state, then what we do is we for whenever you there's a change in this input. So on change, we're going to uh, grab the event and then set the updated title to be equal to e dot target dot value. Now, one thing I want to point out to you guys is that I'm doing everything instead of one component, but I would actually not recommend to do this. I'm just doing this because the whole point of the video is to show you guys uh, how to do every single specific part of Firebase. Uh, so I'm not focusing that much on like organization and that kind of stuff. But I would recommend dividing this into different components, especially making a component for uh, all of for each movie, right? So making a movie component or something like this, and then just returning that component over here. So then now that we have our, our data, I'm also going to call the on uh, click over here and call the update title function or update movie title, I think. And we're going to pass in the ID, which is something we've done uh, with a delete one as well. So movie.id. And over here inside of our 
update movie title, what we do is we now have access to both the new title that we want to update to and also the ID of the movie. So what we do is we grab the document of the movie we want to update just like we are doing right now. Then we come over here instead of saying delete doc, we have to actually use another function called update doc, just like this. And inside of here, instead of calling delete doc, we're going to put update doc. And we're going to put the movie document that we want to update and the new field that we want to change it to. So the new field is we want to change the uh, title field to be equal to the updated title, just like this. So when we do this, now you'll see that if I come over here, refresh the page, try to change this to Harry Potter 2 and click update title, this will change to Harry Potter 2. If I try to change this to enter stellar, just like this, it will, oh, actually, I should put interstellar two, it will change this to interstellar two, and the changes do remain. But there is a little bit of a bug here. But it's not of a bug, because there's an issue with Firebase or anything like this is again, uh, letting you guys know that because we're making everything inside of one component for this video, um, some un unrequested behaviors uh, can happen. For example, if I type on this thing over here, since we're only using one state, if I type here, uh, Harry Potter three, but I click on this button, this will change to Harry Potter three, as you can see, <laughs> which is dumb, right? But the reason is because again, we're just using one state, if you made all of this into their specific separate components, it would work perfectly. So now we're done with our crud, right? Uh, I'm gonna change this back to interstellar. But we're done with our crud, uh, we're able to delete, create, read and update uh, information inside of our Firestar database. So what exactly do we want to learn now? So now I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about the different rules that you can implement inside of your um, Firestore database, because right now, I'm logged in, but if I log out, right, and I try to create a movie, actually, I'm not even logged in. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't logged in yet. And you, and you guys could see that I was able to create movies even not being logged in. What I, what I want to implement here is the ability to read and see all of the movies in the database. Fine, even if you're not logged in. But if you want to create a movie, you'll have to log in to do so. So to do something like this, um, what we have to do is we actually have to, first of all, find a way to keep track of the user ID for the user who created each um, movie. So like in each movie, we're not only going to keep track of if they received an Oscar, if, they, if the release date or, or the title, we also need to keep track of who created that movie, right? Um, the reason for that is because we only want to allow people that has um, a user ID being sent inside of their request. And also not only that, but we want to make it so that the user ID that is sent is also the same as the one that is logged in currently to an account. So what does that mean? Well, when we create a new movie, we're gonna have a few we're gonna have a, a piece of code that is going to automatically um, send uh, a UID a user ID to uh, as a field to this object. And then we're gonna put a rule inside of our Firestore database that's gonna check, okay, if the ID that is over here in this field is the same as the ID of the user who is making this request and trying to create uh, this, this movie, then we're gonna allow it to happen. If not, then we're not going to allow it to happen. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, I'm going to delete both of these movies because they don't have the field that we want to implement, then we're going to come to our code over here. And when we click on uh, the create on submit movie, right, we need to add a new uh, thing over here, this thing is going to be called user ID, or we can call it whatever we want, but it's just the idea of the user who's creating this specific movie. And we're going to set it equal to uh, and then we have to grab the auth because um, we don't have access to the auth here. So we need to grab it by putting auth over here. And then with auth, we can actually set this equal to auth dot UID, I believe, actually, I think I can maybe put current user dot UID. Yeah, this would work. So I'm maybe going to put a question mark over here. Remember, the question marks are only in case uh, a user is not logged in, we don't want to try to access uh, current user from auth because it probably doesn't exist or UID from current user because current user doesn't exist. It's just a way to prevent errors in JavaScript, right? So now we're sending this information, let's check to see if this would work, I'm going to try to cre create, uh, I'm actually going to try to sign in. Uh, actually, I don't think I signed in. I think it got an error because I try to sign in with no information. I'm gonna try to sign in with Google actually, uh, choose an account over here. And uh, 
I hope we're signed in. The only way we can check this is by trying to create a movie. So I'm gonna say, what movie can we try to create? I'm gonna put Fight Club. Release date, bro, I have no idea. I'm gonna put like 1996. I don't even know if that's the true release date, but received an Oscar, I also don't know, but I'm gonna pretend like it did. And we're gonna click Submit Movie. You see Fight Club appears over here. All this information seems to be correct, but let's check if there is a user ID and there is. This is the user ID for the user who's logged into my Gmail account. Now I'm gonna cancel this uh, <laughs> and just keep it the way it is. And now that we have this user ID, what we can do is we can actually come to Firestore over here uh, and go to this rules tab over here. And what you can do with rules is really cool. Right now, anyone is able to both read and write into our database. There's also delete and update, right, which are the other functionalities that you can do to a database. Uh, so we need to take into account them. So the first thing is, who do we want to allow to read the information over here? Well, if we set this to false, right, actually, I'm gonna, you can actually have uh, multiple lines, right? So for example, I can come over here and say, allow read and have a different rule for read and write into our database. So if I wanna allow people to read, but we put allow read if false, you'll see that for some reason, we we can't read the movies and it's now showing over here, but we do, we can create, if I created interstellar um, over here, you would see that it wouldn't appear here, but it would appear over here. Right, so we can create and we can read, but we can't read. This is the opposite of what we want. We wanna be able to read anyone. I think anyone should be able to read what the information is being shown inside of our project. But to create one, it's how, we, and to update and delete uh, should be a little bit different. So let's put over here, write, update, uh, update and delete. So these are the three things that we want to only happen if you're logged in. So what we're gonna put over here is, we wanna say, okay, if first of all, the request, so request is actually something we can get that is a, an object that um, is sent whenever you make a Firebase request. And from that, you can actually get the information of who is authenticated uh, when making that request, which is exactly what we need. And the first thing we need to check is, first of all, is that null? Because if it is null, then don't even keep checking anything. Uh, let's just not allow them, right? So it can't be null. And the second thing is we're gonna put a double ampersand, which means end uh, in this if statement. We're gonna say end, we only wanna allow them to write, update, and delete if the request.auth.uid, so if the UID of that person making the request is equal to the uh, user ID that comes from the request. So whenever you make a request, it should come back with um, some data, including, um, the user ID, right? Just like this. Now, you'll see that what this does is, now we can obviously, we, I made it so that you can always be able to read, so it will show, but if I try to create a new movie, for example, new movie, release date, uh, 1500, I don't know, submit movie, it's gonna work. It appears, or did it appear? Let's check over here. It's not here anymore. This is actually not what I wanted to happen. It should have been created, <laughs> which is kind of weird. Uh, if I come back over here, it's not over here. Hmm. Let me check the rules. Uh, okay, yeah, I see what I did wrong. Uh, this is, should actually be request the resource dot data, <laughs> not what I was doing before. So let's check again. I'm gonna refresh this. Uh, put new movie, fifteen hundred submit movie. Now new movie is over here. And it is indeed, uh, it has indeed been created. But if I try to log out, right? Let's try to log out. I'm gonna log out, refresh this page. I am logged out. I know we don't have any visual confirmation that I'm logged out or not. Uh, but let me try to create a new movie. New Movie 2 was released 100 years later. And it did receive an Oscar. You'll see that this doesn't work. I can click how many times I want, but it won't work because we're not logged in and we don't have the proper authentication credentials to create a new movie. Now, let me sign in with Google again and let's test something that is kind of cool. So I'm gonna sign in with the same account and I wanna try to update or delete something. So if I try to delete, uh, let me come to rules. So if I try to delete um, this one over here, what is gonna happen? It won't allow me to delete, right? Because 
for obvious reasons. Um, we're saying that you can only delete the ones that you created, right? And we didn't create this account. I don't think it created the Fight Club one. I think this account only created the new movie one, right? But if I try to delete this one as well, it won't work. And the reason why it won't work is because now whenever we send a request and you can see immediately we have um, some stuff like some piece of code over here uh, already written for us. So uh, this is how it should look uh, in the beginning, something similar to this. Um, and these rules are what determine uh, whether or not people can actually act upon um, the database. So I've mentioned this already in this video. Uh, we changed a little bit so that it, uh, reading and writing would be true forever. But in our case right now, we don't want this to be the case. Uh, what I'm thinking is to keep this simple and just introduce you guys to the topic. Um, what we can do is we can make it so that people should only be allowed to read. So like read in a CRUD application means seeing the data being displayed, like making a get request or making a query. They should only be able to see um, actually, let's make it so that they should be able to see no matter what. So if true, right? And so whenever anyone who enters this website will be able to read the data that is being displayed. But more, the most important thing for us is being able to actually create and the data or, or edit the data. So what I think I'm going to do is I think let's I'm going to show you guys a couple different uh, examples of what you can do with this thing. So this right over here, it encompasses the three things, the create, the update and the delete. So when you say write, it's basically a shorthand notation for all three of these. But I actually want to make it different so that uh, I can show you guys a little bit more functionality uh, that you can do with this. So for example, for the create, I only, I only want to make it so that you can create a new thing, a new movie, if you're logged in, and you are the user trying to create that specific thing. So you're the user who is actually logged in. I don't know if that makes sense to you right now. But what I mean by this is, uh, we just uh, put the user ID, right? Um, as part of the, the auth. And when we did this, uh, we're not going to send that data to our request. And when we get it back, um, it's going to check to see if it is the same as the the user ID for the user authenticated. And if so, it's going to allow you to create. So this would be the case with the create. But actually, for the um, update and delete, I'll just keep it a little bit different. I just want it so that you just have to be, I don't know, authenticated, just to keep it simple. Um, just to show you guys a little difference on what you can do with all of this. So update and delete, what do we do? Well, if you only want to check to see if the user is authenticated, what you can do with this piece of code is you can say we're only going to allow it to update and delete if the request and request is something you can get uh, from this uh, from your actual database. So if the request dot authentication is not equal to no. So this is all you have to write to check if the user is authenticated or not. So in this case, um, let's check over here, I'm going to refresh. Are we authenticated? I'm not sure I'm going to log out just to be sure. Then now we're not authenticated. Let's try deleting a movie. You see, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because we don't have the correct credentials. But if I try to sign in, I'll sign in with my account and I'll delete one of the ones that I have, for example, that this account created. I think this account created this one. Now you can see, for example, this one over here. Uh, and I refresh the page. You'll see that it did delete that specific thing and it is deleted from our database, right? It's not over here anymore. Now, this is only if you're authenticated, but for creating the request as of right now, it doesn't check to see the user ID like we uh, said that we were going to pass. So to do something like that, what we would do is first, we would check to see if the request.auth is not equal to null, right? Then we also need to check to see if the request uh, request dot auth dot UID. So this is the UID of the authenticated user is equal to the request. And then you can access the resource, which is the data that you give through the request, and you access the data from that. And then you put uh, user ID, which is the field that we put over here. So we're just checking to see if both of them match. And this is fully authenticating the user because it will only allow you to create if that's the case. So now, if we were to create a new movie, we are logged in, we are authenticated. And I wanted to put over here. Uh, I don't know, what's a movie? let's say Star Wars. Oh, I have no idea when Star Wars was released, I'm gonna put the old ones 1980s? Uh, 90s? I have no idea. Uh, received an Oscar? Yeah. You see Star Wars appears over here. 
and um, it was correctly created. So this is a little bit the introduction to how to work with Firestar rules. Uh, I didn't want to get too deep into it because it is a completely different topic, but it is kind of interesting. And this is all of the basics, right? You can do a lot of stuff with this. You can create functions in this. You can um, check for specific users, check for uh, cross check between different collections and a lot of cool stuff. So I would recommend um, trying to understand this and trying to learn this as much as you can, because it is a really interesting thing to learn. So now that we're done with this, I want to teach you guys the next topic before we actually deploy this, uh, which is the last topic I'm going to explain, which is um, the f uh, the storage service in Firebase. So Firebase, you can actually store files over here. It's not only just databases, you can store files and images. And it's a real cool thing that I think a lot of people have trouble uh, dealing with. So for that reason, I wanted to integrate it into this course. So the storage system is really simple. It's very similar to what we've done so far. Um, to set up into your project, you click on the storage thing over here, and then on get started, it will again ask you if you want to do it in pr production or test mode, just like the Firestar database, we're going to put in production, then um, we have to use the same location as before. And it's going to create what is known as a bucket, a bucket will just be a place where we're going to store all of our files in the cloud. And while it is creating, we can come over here to our code and open up the Firebase config um, file, right? Because we're going to be integrating some code to connect this code with the our storage system. So also before that, we need to go to rules and fix up because right now it's not allowing us to either write or read similar to what happened to fire to the Firestore database. So we'll just change this for now to true and publish so that we are able to send images and files into our storage system. So what we have to do is we have to come over here to our code, and we have to import at the top from uh, Firebase slash storage. And what we have to import is the get storage function, just like this, then we're going to do it just like we've been doing so far, we're going to export a constant, and we're going to call it storage, and set it equal to get storage and pass in the app. So very similar, like I said before, then our work is pretty much done on this file, We can come to our app.js. And I'm going to mix everything up again, I'm going <laughs> to actually add the functionality to send images uh, over here at the bottom. So we're going to come down over here at the bottom below this div over here, and we're going to put another div, which is going to contain all the stuff related to sending the image or the file. So what we need is we need an input, which is going to be of type file. And then uh, we just come over here at the bottom, we're also going to put a button that when you click on it is going to submit the file. So upload file. And then we can just come over here at the top, we can import from our Firebase thing, the storage variable, just like this, and we have to create a state that is going to represent the file that we are selecting. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to come over here at the top. Uh, I'm going to add a new set of states, call it file upload state, just to keep it organized for you guys when you guys are reading the code, then set it to use state. We're going to set it to null initially because it's a file. So it's not a specific type. And we're going to call it file upload and set file upload just like this. Then what we want to do is we're going to come over here to our input where we're going to be selecting the file. And we're going to give it an on change that we're going to grab the event. And whenever there's any changes in the input, which means whenever you select a file, we want to set the file upload to be event dot target dot files. So when you are have an input of type file, uh, you can access this property called files on the target. And it's files and not file because it could you could actually select multiple files, right? When you have this input, you can there's some inputs that allow you to select multiple files and some that you should only select one. In our case, let's just keep it simple and upload one. So uh, I'm just gonna grab this is gonna be an array. So I'm just gonna grab the first file that you select, right? to keep it simple. Then I'm going to save this. And technically, we have uh, the state working. But what we have to do now, oh, I just realized I called this E and not event. So I'm going to put E over here. So what we have to do now is create a function that is going to be called uh, upload file, something like that. And it's going to be called whenever you click on the upload file uh, button, I'm going to create it uh, probably down 
here. I know this component is getting a little bit confusing, uh, but I'm going to add some comments uh, after the end of the video. So if you guys download the code, it should be a little bit more organized. So over here, I'm going to call the upload file function. And this function will be pretty simple. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to first check to see if the um, upload file state no actually, no, it's file upload state. So if the file upload state is no, so if there's no file to upload, then we just return and end this function because we don't want to continue trying to send an empty file to our storage system. But if it is not no, then we have to make a reference to our storage system. So how exactly are we going to make a reference? The thing is, on our storage system over here, we can actually do cool stuff like create a folder, right? So if I want to create a folder called project files, right, I could just create this folder. And I can specify that I want to add those files to this folder. And to do that, all I had to do is I just I just create a variable called uh, files folder ref, set it equal to um, a reference variable, which is something that exists in Firebase, and we just import it, as you can see over here, as you can see, um, then we set a reference and we pass in the storage uh, that we have the variable that we imported at the top, then we just set in over here, the path to where we want to store this file. So it would be on the file folder is a file folder project files. Uh, it has to be the same name project files, slash and then here is where we want to upload the file. Now we can specify what the name of the file is going to be. What I like is to usually either just keep it the same name and to keep it the same name, all we would have to do is uh, just add the file upload dot name, this over here would get the name of the file because file upload is a file. Um, and then we could add something else if you wanted to, but I'll just keep it like this. I'll just keep it the same name as what you're uploading. Then we come over here and we need to actually use a couple functions from Firebase. And to use those functions, we have to make this fu this uh, uh, function uh, asynchronous, right? So the function that we want to use is called and it needs to be from the storage, it's called upload bytes, this over here. So what we do with this is pretty simple. We come over here, we say await, then upload bytes, and we just specify the reference we want to upload to so the files folder ref, and our file that we want to upload. So in our case, the file upload. So now this is just going to send it to this specific path, the one we defined over here, and it's going to send this file over here. Uh, we can obviously try catch, right? Because we want to handle the errors. So I'm going to say try, and then catch. And say console dot error. Uh, any possible errors that we have. So just like this. And now we can come over here. You obviously if I open this file, you'll see there's nothing inside of here. But if I come over here, refresh my page, and I come to the choose file thing over here, right, I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see a little bit better. This over here. So when I click on this, it's gonna ask for a file, I'm gonna upload a thumbnail that I made, right over here, click open, it's gonna choose the file. And then I'm going to click on upload file, but I'm going to inspect element to see if any errors are going to occur uh, when we do this. So I'm going to click on the button. And no errors seem to have been consoled, meaning that our try statement must have passed. But the only way to check is coming over here. And um, maybe refreshing, let's see. Yeah, you can see our file was successfully uploaded into our storage system. Now, in this case, how would we receive that file back? Well, if you're it's, it's a little bit more complicated. And I don't want to make this video too long. So I actually have a specified video on just this where I teach you guys how to upload the file and how to get everything and display it into your project, uh, especially if it's an image, right? Because sometimes it's hard to display a PDF if that's the file your file type that you're trying to upload. But with images, I have a video on this I'm linking on the description if you want to check it out. But I'm not going to show you guys how to um, get those files just to not make the video too long. Because now we're done with this part of the tutorial. This is a really interesting service that I think Firebase provides. And I, I honestly, uh, think it's really worth it to use Firebase just for this, uh, if you're interested. 
But the last thing that makes Firebase amazing is how easy it is to host your projects in here. So how would we do this? Well, there's another service called hosting, which we kind of told Firebase that we already want to use. So you click on hosting, then go to get started. And it's going to ask you to install the Firebase CLI, which we have already done in the beginning of the video. But if you have not just install it like this, just run the command. We're going to click on next, then it's going to ask us to sign in to our Firebase account inside of our terminal. And to do that, we're just going to open up a terminal over here, I'm going to come to our code, open up a terminal, I'm going to clear it, I'm going to put Firebase login. So the Firebase command only exists if you have the Firebase CLI already installed. So make sure you have that installed. And also make sure that after you run this command over here, you reinitialize your terminal or else it won't recognize the command. So you can see I obviously already logged in to Firebase with this. So um, it I already have done this. So it doesn't matter, you guys should just do it on your own. Then we have to copy the Firebase init command, paste it over here. And as you can see, it's going to ask us a bunch of questions. So now you can see it gives us a lot of options actually over here. Uh, of what we exactly we want to deploy. So um, I don't want to get too deep into each of them. Uh, you can actually just deploy specific portions of your projects, you can deploy, like, you can just deploy a database, for example, you don't even have to deploy a front end or a back end. In our case, what we want to deploy is, um, we're going to choose the option that says hosting, and then configure files for Firebase hosting and option optionally set up GitHub action deploys. So it's this one over here. And to select it, you don't press return or enter, you actually press space. And you'll see that it will select by because it will become green. And then you press return. If you don't press space, it will give you an error. So now it's asking us to choose between using an existing project to deploy or creating a new project, or uh, there's two other options that doesn't really matter in our case over here. In our case, we already have a project, which is the one we just finished creating. So I'm just going to choose this one over here. Also, in this case, you just press enter, you don't have to press space. Uh, for some reason, that's how they they made it look like. So now it's going to ask which Firebase project do we want to deploy. So I have a bunch, a bunch of, of stuff, right? Obviously, uh, I have a bunch of projects that I can deploy. But I do want to choose the one that we have set up over here. So what is the name of this specific project? Well, if we come over here, we'll see it's called Firebase course, I'm gonna click on this again, just to get back to where it was, it's called Firebase course. So I have to choose the one that is called Firebase course, which is this one over here, you choose the one that is specific for your project, then I'm gonna press enter. So now it's asking us uh, what we want to use as a public directory, as you might know, uh, we have public over here as a folder in a base create react app project. And it is where all of our code and assets are exist, right. Um, so we want to keep that name. And by default, if we just press enter, that's what it's going to default to. Um, then it's going to ask if we want to configure our project as a single page app where we rewrite all of our URLs to index.html. We don't want that. And by default, no is already the answer. So press enter again, then it's going to ask if you want to set up automatic builds and deploys with GitHub. This is really useful. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to do this. Basically, what it means is um, when you uh, make any changes to your code, and you push it to GitHub, it will automatically re trigger a deploy, meaning that the changes that are uh, that you just made are going to become live. So we're going to press yes. And when we do this, it's actually going to uh, ask us, first of all, if we want to rewrite, um, overwrite our file, we're going to put no, we don't want that. And it's going to open up something for GitHub so we can set it up. And I already have set up I already logged in to to GitHub with my Firebase CLI. So I, I can't do it again. But all you guys have to do is just put your information for GitHub, and it will log you in. But now that we have uh, logged in and linked our CLI with um, GitHub, we could just come to our Visual Studio code. And it's going to be asking us, okay, for which uh, GitHub repository, would you like to set up your GitHub workflow? So what it's asking is it's asking us to go to GitHub, um, choose the repository where we specifically uh, deployed our project. So in this case, it's assuming that you've pushed code to GitHub, right? So uh, that's what I'm assuming here that you've pushed this code into GitHub, because this is how you would set up with GitHub, right? You created a, rep a repository and push your code. So in our case, we actually haven't done that yet. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to create a new repository over here. Let's call it uh, react firebase course. So react firebase course, I'm creating this and this is what is going to be in the description of this video. Uh, I'm going to create the repository, I'm going to copy all of this stuff, just come over here, I'm going to actually open a new terminal, uh, say git init, uh, git 
add dot and then just push all of this it's going to push all of the code and now they all exist inside of our repository so now we want to link our this terminal over here we want to link our github repository to our github workflow so the way we do this is we copy um, basically this part of the URL of our repository from our username to the end of the name of the repository. So we just copy paste it over here, press enter. And as you can see, it is um, setting up everything uh, related to that specific repository. Now it's going to ask us if we want to set up the workflow to run a build script before every deploy. For this, we just want to press enter. Uh, then it's going to ask if we want to set up automatic deployment to our sites, live channel when a PR is merged. Again, press enter. Then what is the name of the branch associated with your sites, live channel? So this is in the case where you have multiple branches, right? Uh, and you want to only s deploy one branch or specify that that specific branch will be the one that should be deployed. In our case, we only have one, right? And this, because I just created this, I didn't create multiple branches, we just have the main and it is the default one. So I'm going to press enter. But if you had another branch that you wanted to deploy, you would just write its name over here. So I'm going to press enter and it says Firebase initialization complete. So now we go back over here to our thing over here, press next, and it's going to tell us to run the command Firebase deploy. So let's do this right now, press enter. And let's see what happens. Now that it's done, let's click on the hosting URL for the project. It's what appears over here. I'm going to click on this, it's going to open up. And so it doesn't seem to be appearing uh, our actual code. And this is a mistake I do every single time I deploy to Firebase. Uh, I don't know why I make this mistake so much. But I'll explain to you guys what the mistake is. We forgot to build our, <laughs> our project. So when you're finished with a react app, you actually can create an optimized version of it by running the command yarn uh, build. And you'll see it will run and create this production build as you can see. And we had to do this actually before running Firebase init. So this is a good point because if you guys ever forget uh, to do this, this is what's causing the issue. So now that we ran the Firebase, uh, we ran the yarn build, we have a build folder, right over here. And this is actually instead of the public folder, remember, there was a question that asked us um, where we wanted to to store our project, right? So we, we set it to to the public folder, but that's, sh that's wrong, it should be the build folder. So I'm going to put Firebase in it over here, press enter, go through this again. But now we're used to it. So we just press enter, then it's going to ask, where do you want to store your public directory? And this is where we put that we want to put the build folder just like this, press enter. And then we just put enter to all of them. And it says Firebase initialization complete. Now that we fix this error, we can run uh, Firebase deploy again. And uh, when it's finished deploying, I'll be back in a second. Okay, as you can see, it finished deploying. So I'm going to refresh this page. And hopefully, and <laughs> surely, it does work. As you guys can see, I just realized I made everything really small as well. I didn't care about CSS at all. And I was kind of zoomed into to <laughs> my browser. But yeah, that's that it, it is deployed, you can play around with it. The data is matching the data that we have over here in our Firestore database, which is really cool. But um, yeah, this is the deployment process. And I really hope you guys understood it. Um, I know it was it might have gotten a little bit confusing at the end over there. But if you, have, if you guys have any sort of questions, just ask me in the description, obviously, I'll be helping out anyone who who is interested in, in learning and enjoying this topic. But yeah, that's that's basically it. I'm really excited that I made this video because uh, I really wanted to make a full compilation of Firebase stuff, because it is a really cool technology. I, I used to not like it until I tried it. And now I'm in love with it. So yeah, yeah, that's that's basically it. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting every week and I'll massively appreciate it. Again, thank you. Brilliant for sponsoring this video. It is this kind of companies that actually support our channel and makes me um, continue providing valuable content for you guys. So if you guys could help me out and go check out their service, it's really nice. Uh, I'll be really grateful as well. So that's basically it. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time.